Hey everybody, I'm Gretchen from Children's Museum Houston. Welcome back to another Educator Moment sponsored by Holt House Foundation for Kids. Today, we're gonna be learning about bonding. No, not that kind of bonding, that's family bonding. Today, we're gonna be talking about the kind of bonding that occurs between atoms of different elements, the kind of bonding that gives us molecules. So there are three types of bonds that can form between atoms, covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and metallic bonds. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on covalent bonds and ionic bonds only. So one of the things that I really like about this set is that even if you are just getting started to pursue an interest in chemistry, um, it, it's a really good set to kind of help guide you down that path without presenting information in an overwhelming way. So I'll walk you through how to um, form covalent bonds with the set, and we'll talk about what those are, and you'll see what I mean. So let's start by looking at an oxygen atom. Okay, so in the oxygen atom here, you'll notice it's got all of these kind of fun arm things sticking off of it. And these arm things um, each have a little metal cap on the end. And those metal caps represent what we call valence electrons for an atom. So in the oxygen atom, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons, okay? So you don't even have to know this because the at, at first because the um, the set will provide you with the accurate number of valence electrons, and this is important because that affects what this atom tends to bond to. So in an atom that's got six valence electrons, it typically wants to try to gain two electrons, okay, which will be represented by these little magnetic ports here so that it can achieve uh, eight electrons in its outer shell. Eight is the magic number for an atom. It wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell um, because that helps it to gain stability as an atom. So we know just from picking this, this atom up in our set that it's looking to bond in two places. And so let's give oxygen something to bond with, right? So this is a, a little um, hydrogen atom here, and we know, based on what we just talked about, it's got one valence electron. All right, and it's also got a little magnetic port here, which means that it's looking to share um, an electron with another with an, another uh, atom. All right, so we're going to put the hydrogen electron there and the oxygen electron there. They just kind of snap into place and voila, we've got a chemical bond. Now, because these two electrons uh, are being shared, we're gonna call this a covalent bond. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared between two atoms. We're also gonna call this a single bond. It's a single bond because in this particular covalent bond, we're only working with two electrons. So there's only one pair of electrons being shared in a single bond. Okay, so. Um, so it, there's two little arms, right? But there's two electrons here. This is a single bond, okay? Two electrons being shared. Now, there's another port over here. So let's go ahead and put on another hydrogen atom like that, form another single covalent bond. And all of a sudden, we've got a molecule, guys. This is H2O. So there's two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. H2O is the chemical name for this. And we know this as water, right? This is what a water molecule looks like, guys. You'll notice there's a couple of unpaired electrons on this oxygen atom, and that's okay. Um, they're still there <laughs> in, a, in a water molecule, um, and they, they kind of uh, help to give it its bent shape uh, because they repel as such. But um, the important thing is it's okay that those are there. We know that we've completed all the bonds because there's no little metal ports for us to put anything else. Uh, on this uh, oxygen atom. So we've got water, all right? Okay, um, let's talk about uh, a double bond. So sometimes there are atoms um, that will form bonds with other atoms of the same element. For example, this oxygen atom will form a bond with this oxygen atom to make a molecule. Atom elements that do that, we call those diatomic elements. Oxygen is one of those. So we've got um, six valence electrons here, six valence electrons here, two ports on each, ready to receive electrons. Um, and so we're gonna make a bond here, like so. And then we're on the same atom, we're going to attach 
the remaining uh, electrons to the other ports. So this, we've got two atoms bonded together, but now there are, they're sharing one, two, three, four electrons. So it's covalent because they're sharing electrons. But in this case, they're sharing two pairs of electrons. They're sharing four electrons. That means it's a double bond that is covalent here. Okay, so this is what a double bond would look like in this set. You got four little arms there kind of all connected. All right, okay. All right, moving right along. So the other type of bond that I told you we'd be exploring today is called an ionic bond. An ionic bond um, is when you've got two atoms um, that bond and there's one atom that actually donates its electron to the other atom. There, there's no sharing of the electron involved. And a lot of times this will happen with a metal and a non-metal. So I have a sodium atom, which is a metal, and I have a chlorine atom, which is a non-metal. The sodium, sodium atom has one valence electron. The chlorine atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Remember I said that magic number was eight. So if that's the case, it's, it's likely that we'll have only one port to try to get to eight. And that, that's true here on this modeling set. There's one port there where we can attach another atom. In this case, sodium is gonna just give its electron to chlorine. It's got no port where it can receive something to share, right? So it's just gonna give its electron over to chlorine and then we've got a molecule. This is sodium chloride, otherwise known as table salt. This is what a table salt molecule looks like. And again, we do have some unpaired electrons and that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's a single and a double covalent bond that we've covered and an ionic bond. Um, using these happy atom sets. So happy atoms is a great set. It's definitely one of my favorites that I've come across um, in trying to introduce uh, the concepts that we talked about in this video. But if you don't have access to happy atoms, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how you can make your own modeling set to study the same types of chemistry concepts using some items that you probably already have around the house. So stay tuned. Okay guys, I am back with gumdrops and toothpicks and we're gonna make a modeling set so that we can study covalent and ionic bonds uh, without using happy atoms if we have this stuff at home instead. So um, remember uh, our little hydrogen atoms that we were using earlier, they had one valence electron. Remember hydrogen's right here in the table, so it's group number 1A tells us it's gonna have one valence electron. And we were talking about how a covalent bond is shared, uh, is a shared pair of electrons between two atoms. So I have another hydrogen atom here and I'm just going to push these together like that. There we go. There. And I just made a molecule of hydrogen, right? Remember this is one of our diatomic elements, the kind that bond with other atoms of the same element sometimes. And this is a single bond, remember? So we've got two electrons being shared between these two hydrogen atoms, okay? Remember this guy, this is our water molecule. So we have a single bond here, that's a covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen. We've got another one here, single covalent bond. And then we've got those unpaired electrons sticking off. And all I did was color the tips of my toothpicks black. So that I'm reminded that the reason those are there is to tell me that there are electrons there, right, that aren't bonded. So this is our water molecule, all right. And then uh, let's take a look at this one. So um, here we've got, we've got a sodium atom here, right? And so remember, okay, sodium is right here on the periodic table. It's got one valence electron represented right here. And sodium is a metal, and so it's going to form uh, an ionic bond in this case with chlorine. So a metal and a non-metal. Um, and so we've got a spot here where our chlorine atom is willing to accept an electron. Okay, so chlorine, let's take a break and look at that. Chlorine is right here. Sorry, I'm trying to do too many things at once. Chlorine's right here in the periodic table in group 7a. So that means, remember, that it's gonna have seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But the magic number is eight, right, for stability. So that's why 
it is all too excited about forming that one ionic bond and actually getting that electron from sodium. And so then we've got our salt molecule, sodium chloride, right? Same concepts, right? So if you do have access to happy atoms, that's great. But um, please know that that is, um, is not the, the only way that you can explore uh, chemical bonding. Like with just a little bit of uh, creativity, um, you can have, you know, a great experience using things like uh, toothpicks and gumdrops, marshmallows, something like that as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this educator moment sponsored by Hold House Foundation for Kids. I'm Gretchen from Children's Museum Houston, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.